Hello, this is Miss Bones talking. You may be a pupil or you may be a parent or carer watching this. Whoever you are, what follows is intended to help with the course choice decisions that have to be made soon. From now on, I'll talk with my audience as the pupils, but the messages are for everyone. I'll start with a reminder of what the senior phase in Scotland is designed to offer young people. Well, the senior phase clearly comes after the broad general education of S1 to S3. So it builds on what you experience in the first three years of high school. When you move into S4 and then into S5 and S6, you choose what you like and what you're good at. And you learn much more about subjects and what you learn takes you much deeper into the ideas, the concepts, the theories. If you work hard, you'll leave with the qualifications that will take you on to the next stage, whatever that may be. And also, as you gain your qualifications, you develop the skills that you need, whether you decide to continue with learning or go into work. And skills such as problem solving, independence and resilience are ones that will help you through whatever life might throw at you. So what do you have to do in the way of courses in S5 and S6? In S5, you take six courses, plus health and wellbeing and PSE. You also got a study period during the course of the week. In S6, you study five courses, plus health and wellbeing and PSE. And you have a bit more study time this year for five periods. You also need to continue with English and maths if you haven't yet achieved your full potential. And do you remember all the new subjects that there are for you to choose from in the senior phase? Here they are. And the opportunities to learn outside the classroom. There's subjects you can do run by teachers in the school, such as beekeeping and rural skills and the Duke of Edinburgh's award, as well as other ways you can learn outside the classroom, for example, by taking on a college course or a foundation apprenticeship. A wee bit about college courses first. There are more courses available to you in S5 and S6 than was the case in S4. On-campus college courses run on a Tuesday and a Thursday afternoon, and there are a few courses which run on a Friday afternoon. Some courses are virtual, and when you study these courses, is a wee bit more flexible. You have to be committed to take on one of the college courses, though. You won't be home until around 4.30pm, and lunch can be a bit of a rush. The virtual courses where you don't travel to a college campus require self-discipline and good organisation skills. But it's all worth it if you want to do one of the interesting courses on offer. Over this session and last, online learning has been necessary to some extent for all college courses. Everyone hopes, however, that by August 2022, COVID restrictions will be minimal and college courses will run as designed. For more information on the courses available, see the college website and the video on the school website. Please do note, though, that granting courses cannot be accessed due to the travel time involved. Moving on to foundation apprenticeships. The Midlothian ones can now be done in one year rather than two. The qualification remains at level six, so the same level of difficulty is higher, but you will be taught in a different way and you'll learn quite differently from how you learn if you're doing, say, higher English. FA's focus on particular areas of the job market and some of the time you spend with what's called a learning provider. That's where you get the theory connected to the employment area. A learning provider in Midlothian could be Midlothian Communities and Lifelong Learning or it could be Edinburgh College. The other type of input in the course comes from industry. You'll work in companies or workplaces connected to the subject of your FA and you'll work with your experienced colleagues on real projects. In recent years, we've had pupils working in local nurseries and care homes as well as at Microsoft in Edinburgh. So what do you get out of doing an FA? Well, from the quality work experience and teaching, you learn the essential skills and specialised areas that employers want. And even if you decide you don't want to go into the area in which you did your FA, the skills you learn 
and the experience you gain will strengthen your CV or your personal statement for college or university. If you successfully complete your FA and you want to go into a modern apprenticeship immediately on leaving school, your FA will support your application and you'll actually have already completed some of the learning required for the MA, so you will be ahead of the game. And if college or university is your thing, the FA qualification is recognised by all colleges and universities. But a word of warning, always check the university or college website for the specific entry requirements for any course in which you might be interested or give them a phone. It could be the case, for example, that a university counts an FA as an entry qualification, but only if you're applying to study a course in the same area. Midlothian Council will offer four FAs this session. There are others available through Edinburgh College. Have a look at the Midlothian Council and Edinburgh College websites for further details. Now a quick recap on the types of qualification that are offered in the senior phase. The ones you'll know most about are what are called the national qualifications, that is National 3, 4, 5, Higher and Advanced Higher. In normal times there is no exam for National 3 and National 4 and exams for the other levels. I want, you to, I want to encourage you to think in terms of levels. So National 3 is level 3, National 4 is level 4 and so on up to Advanced Higher and that is level 7. Why is this? Why do, why do I want you to think in terms of levels? Well, because you can do other kinds of qualifications in the senior phase and you need to be able to compare them, the qualifications, with each other so that you can judge difficulty, the amount of work and then make choices about what you want to do. There is something called the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework that will help you make sense of all the different types of qualification. And look in the option booklet for more information and there's a website as well if you google it. One of the other types of course open to you in our senior phase is skills for work courses. These practical courses which don't have an exam all encourage you to practice the sort of skills needed no matter the particular job you do. For example working as a team, using initiative and so on. You can practice these skills by choosing courses that focus on quite different areas of employment. And you can see here the ones we're offering in school for next year. Another type of course you can do is one that leads to what is called a National Progression Award. Again, it's skills sought after by employers that you'll get. But this time what you achieve is linked to a workplace standard. So if you put these qualifications down on an application form, an employer will know exactly the sort of skills you have and the level of those skills. NPAs are available at levels two to six and have a look here at what you can do in school. The final type of course to look at is one that gets you an SQA award. These courses help you to develop personal skills, the ones you'll need when you leave school. These are skills that will motivate you to be successful and to participate positively in the communities in which you live. And again, here's the courses the school offers. Moving on then, how will the coursing system work this year? It'll be a bit different from previous sessions because at the initial stage, subjects won't be divided into columns. Basing your requests on the recommendations that subjects give you and having done all your research, you choose six courses or five plus study if you're in S6. Then you number these courses one to six in S5 or one to five in S6 in order of importance, with number one being the course that is most important to you. Finally, you also indicate two reserve choices. It's very important that you're happy to study these options for reasons I will explain next. Reserve choices are necessary because you might not be able to do every course you've requested. And this could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe not enough students have selected a course, so it's not running. 
or on the other hand, too many pupils have signed up for a course and decisions have to be made for the greatest good. Or you might have requested two subjects that have had to be timetabled at the same time. So you can see why it's vital that you make reserve choices you're happy to follow through on. We'll try and give you what you want, but sometimes it's just not possible. Right, on to the timescale for this year's coursing. Be ready for a meeting with your PSL between Wednesday 26th January and Friday the 4th of February. Bring your signed option form to that meeting. Once all the requests are in, they'll be fed into a computer programme and the programme sorts out the choices to the overall highest satisfaction rate. Individual coursing is then reviewed and if necessary, we'll talk to you then about your choices. This is a complex and lengthy process with lots of things to be balanced, so please be patient as confirmed choices will be made available just prior to the start of the new timetable at the beginning of June. This is all quite a lot to take in, but there's plenty of support out there to help. Take on board what your teachers say in your reports and look at the progression routes they've recommended. Work through all the materials on the school website don't just look at course names on the option form. Take time to explore the course descriptions in the option booklet and ask at the school office if you wish a hard copy of the school booklet. Then there are people you can speak to, your careers advisor, Barbara, and the school's DYW coordinator, Lee, both of whom you'll be hearing from shortly. And of course, your PSLs, who will be focusing in PSE on all matters course choice over the next couple of weeks. Finally, in your deliberations, be ambitious about what you can achieve, but realistic about any barriers that could hold you back. And think about why you're choosing to continue with a subject or not. Are you making your choice for the right reasons? Be honest with yourself. Is it your choice or your friends? It's really too late for that kind of decision making now. If you have any questions about anything I've said here, your PSL is your first port of call. Now, please go on and watch videos 3, 4 and 5.